I am Dr. Vito Wabrowskis, and I would like to talk to you about ammonium nitrate safety. On August 4th, 2020, a large uncontrolled fire raged in the port of Beirut, heated up stored ammonium nitrate, and caused a blast which killed over 200 persons and leveled much of the port and a sizable fraction of the downtown of the city. Some seven years earlier, on 17th April of 2013, an uncontrolled fire raged in the town of West Texas. It heated up stored ammonium nitrate, caused a blast which killed 15 persons, nearly all first responders, and leveled a sizable fraction of this town. The West tragedy was widely publicized, and I myself subsequently wrote some 10 papers trying to educate the citizenry on how to avoid ammonium nitrate disasters. Yet, it appears that the people in the government of Beirut who were in charge of these matters did not consider the necessity of safety measures. I have also done a very comprehensive historical study of ammonium nitrate disasters. There have been more than a thousand people killed over the years in disasters which are so terribly similar to those at West or at Beirut. This does not have to continue. We can learn, but we must need to do some learning. Ammonium nitrate is an unusual chemical with some specialized properties. You cannot cause it to explode by using small flames, handguns, or other small sources of energy. The historical analysis shows that 100% of the ammonium nitrate explosions that have occurred in storage or in transport have been due to only one cause, uncontrolled fire. Furthermore, analysis showed that if you have an uncontrolled fire impinging on stored ammonium nitrate, there is a 30% probability of a blast and a 15% probability that there will be dead bodies. These statistics should be unacceptable to anyone who is storing ammonium nitrate in an unsafe manner. Yet, this lesson is still to be learned. Because it is so difficult to initiate an explosion of ammonium nitrate, it can, in fact, be stored safely without extreme protection measures. But certain protection measures are non-negotiable. The main one is that the storage must be in a totally non-combustible building with nothing nearby that can burn and nothing that can explode. We know what burned in West that led to that disaster, a ridiculously unsafe building built out of mostly ordinary wood construction. We don't yet know the details of exactly what all was involved in the fire at Beirut, apart from a stash of fireworks. What is so tragic with regards to the safety is that the proper assessment does not require an engineer or a scientist. Any layperson, any government official should be able to discern without special training whether there are combustible or explosible things in or near a warehouse. Once they determine that there are such hazards, how in good conscience can they accept the fact that if a big fire takes place, there is a 15% likelihood of tragic funerals needing to take place? Every death and every destroyed home or livelihood is a tragedy which we can all deeply sympathize with. But in Beirut, the tragedies were truly on a vast scale. About a quarter million people had their homes destroyed in addition to the dead and those who were seriously injured. The lessons must be learned. It is an unconscionable disregard of human life to allow ammonium nitrate to be stored in such a way that it will threaten to destroy communities and to bring outrageous suffering to the population. I beg every government official worldwide and every other person who has decision-making authority over ammonium nitrate storage, please do not allow your fellow citizens to be blasted into a horrific death. 